Welcome back to another Reaction Extraction, guys. I'm Ty, this is Dad, and today is a cool day because we're gonna be discussing auto-tune and like what, it, what it's done for the music industry. We're diving into a big topic today. Um, we're gonna have conversations from time to time uh, related to music, and this is a big one. We talk about it a bunch. It seems to come up in videos, comes up personally when we're talking about music. And comments. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So we should start out with like what is auto tune? Okay. Check it out. I have an actual like definition. Just so we start okay. out with what okay. are we talking about? Yeah, let's do it. What is auto tune? All right. A device or facility for tuning something, especially a piece of computer software that enables the correction of an out of tune vocal performance. Mm -hmm. So that's a basic nuts and bolts kind of uh description of autotune what what is your kind of reality of autotune i feel like that's a very accurate description too because i mean um what autotune is to me is exactly what we just said software that um helps change the pitch or the vocal inflections um and notes to match the, the the key that it's in the mark ronson documentary yeah, I wanted okay. to bring that up because yeah, he took it back to like the seventies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're we're gonna start in uh, nineteen ninety seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, when the technology uh, Antares Audio Tech. Yeah, I know that. I All know right, that company. There you go. Nineteen ninety seven. They're in California City, California, USA. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about a hundred miles north of Los Angeles. Okay, 97, remember, that's when the technology is ready to go, commercial-wise. Okay, so then the next year, 1990, uh, 1998, you have Cher. Yeah, that big. Cher with her song, <laughs> Believe. Yeah. Okay, to where today, uh, it's almost, Auto-Tune has like a pseudo name called, you know, the Cher Effect. Yeah. You know, big song, it, it just happened worldwide smash and it is share you know uh do you know huge artist yeah huge artist but she was an actress also oscar winning actress for moonstruck big personality kind of madonna ish before madonna mm -hmm. okay and she did had plenty of hits in the 70s obviously i got you babe sunny and share they did a tv show here in america and in the 70s 80s 80s especially she had some big hits she was relevant Mm -hmm. Okay, so the 90s are coming along, music is changing, and I kind of think she took this as, um, I'm going to make a new album and believe it's going to be something different she was going to try and see what happened, because at mm -hmm. that point in her career, she's getting older, so it's probably a perfect match, okay? Trying to try something new. Exactly. You know, now, expand her. Right, and I, I'm sure, and, and Taurus didn't expect... <laughs> To have, uh, hey, our first big use of auto-tune in this way be a worldwide smash. And let me tell you my reality on it. Yeah. At first. I did like the song. Really? Yes. The song was great. Uh, and the auto-tune was used in parts of it. Okay. Probably the chorus part, the most important part. But I remember it being liked and getting a lot of flack. Being what? Liked? Yes. It was oh, like... Yeah. The bipolar... Yeah, some people it. liked it, and some people were confused by it and didn't like it at all. But here was the thing. With it being so big, she performed it on several live shows, mm -hmm. okay, here in America, probably even the Grammys, um, different award shows here. And the big question was, this is going to sound really, like, mundane to you or silly to you, based on how technology and concerts work today. But back then, everyone was just crying, how are you, you going to use this and perform it live? Yeah. Since you didn't sing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, auto-tune helped, especially in the chorus. They were like, how are you going to do it live? And of course, uh, that was the debate. What's easy now was more complex yeah. back then. And, and again, she sang it well. And so that kind of started the whole uh, debate about auto-tune. Now... Do my perspective first, and then we'll go into yours. Okay. Okay, because I'm the old guy. At first, I totally understood the confusion of it. 
Okay, because there was an argument to be made. Yeah. Playing instruments, singing, talent versus what maybe was a cheat back then. No one yeah. understanding the artistic possibilities. Yeah. Okay, so there was confusion. I liked it, but I also understood, hmm, I don't know if I like how that's going to fit in music in the future because playing, the rawness of playing instruments, the talent of, the, the vocal talent of... Rawness of vocals. I mean, it's been done for the same way, like for all of history, you know. It's a big change. Yes, and you know, uh, bands like Duran Duran or Def Leppard who are known for not having really good lead singers and good harmony, instead of autotune, they would maybe, you know, layer the voice on top of yeah. each other. So the harmonies would be very rich with Simon Le Bon or Joe Elliott because they're singing with themselves, yeah. right? So, and there was the, the strings were used. There were ways to fill in stuff, okay? And obviously, but then it, here's another thing, though. I also recall, like, Freddie Mercury... A really great lead singer, you know, taking, you know, having like, and the Beatles did the same thing, having like 50 takes mm -hmm. to get it right. It wasn't, let's do it a few times and we'll fix it. Okay. So to me, as an older dude, I always balanced the talent part of it, which was a topic of discussion, not let's just go and be creative and auto tune will fix this and that and we'll piece it together. Beyond that, you helped me understand, okay, now there's a creative validity. Mm hmm to it where now I don't think an artist if an artist has a whole career based on auto-tune uh, to me that's not very artistic using it now and then um, I see the the creative relevance to it and now I've gone from a negative confused opinion understanding to I get it now would you say that's with the help of the show or just on your own and thinking Every, about it okay first it was everything but my opinion still wasn't solid Doing the show, having discussions with you, helped me piece together the artistic value it has. Right. So that's where I am now. I'm still mm -hmm. a little indifferent, okay? But I also have artists I like that are getting older. Mm -hmm. And if Autotune helps Andy Bell, if Autotune helps Bernard Sumner, if it helps Neil Tennant, Simon Le Bon, you know, Robert Smith, if Autotune helps those artists today sound good if they're still making music no i don't view that as a cheat if anything i'm at the age where heck bring it on because i want to hear them sound great mm -hmm. okay so that's where my perspective has gone from indifferent to yeah I, I i see positive elements to it and i'm okay with it now i'm 50 you're 21 what where does it fit in your experience and your music ideology well so growing up I remember I remember autotune being introduced to music for the early stages and there was a heavy debate. Right now it's it's still talked about, but it's not as what, much because What does the debate look like now? Now, well there's always there's still people that Okay, so there's artists that use autotune a lot. There's like a threshold. So when you use autotune, there's like a threshold of how quickly it changes the pitch. Okay. To hit that note. So sometimes it'll take longer to glide up to that note or sometimes it'll go instantly, you know. So depending on how hmm. you use autotune, because it's very versatile, okay. uh, depends on the, the kind of sound you're going to get. And so okay. um, kind of what you were touching on earlier about um, artists that use their whole career on autotune, um, you don't really give it that much cred. Because they're relying on it so much. Your generation kind of feels the same? Um, no. I would say... Um, no. No, because T-Pain was one of the first artists that really made auto-tune um, commercially successful. Yeah, Cher had a hit. Um, J-Lo used it once. There's still a novelty. Um, Daft Punk used um, like a vocoder. You know vocoders? Yeah. Th okay. Those are on synths, you know, from the 80s. So. Sure, sure. So uh, this um, vocal change, uh, I think, has been a slow progression. Definitely a slow progression. So, I mean, if you go back and you have, um, you know, talk boxes, you know, 
um, but it seems like vocoder. in the old days it was an enhancement and now it's being used in the completion of an entire song mm -hmm. and a whole vocal performance. I think my generation is more the vocal singing aspect of it. But like like in that um, Mark Ronson documentary, mm -hmm. you can still, even with heavy auto-tune usage, yeah. you're still able to decipher the artistry and the the artist's voice i agree and the inflections in the in the sound so i agree but wh where do you stand on an actual raw singing vocal okay singing performance in the studio here's how i look at it from my perspective i think they're two separate lanes i think there is incredible singers out there mm -hmm. incredible vocalists you know just to name one adele come on Right. So you it's know, still valid. For an example. Yeah. So there there are there are artists out there that can sing their asses off. Correct. Right. And they don't really need auto tune because that's the way they do it. Now if right. Adele, if Adele wanted to go and make a certain sound and use auto tune for an artistry perspective, right. what would you think about that? That I'm fine with because that's an enhancement mm -hmm. of someone that is using it in a creative artistic way occasionally right so i look at that as kind of a different lane like that's the part i do like okay is someone who is talented but uses it in their career as an element to spice things up okay well now think about this say an artist can or can't sing doesn't matter <laughs> that let's say can't sing so what, okay. what do they do they can't sing but they don't want to sound like the normal human vocalist. They want a specific sound that um, caters to what they want to sound like and what Maybe they, they write or the instrumentation. Yeah, the stuff. way the way they hear the music and the, the way they want to produce it. You okay. know, auto tune helps with that a lot. So, For sure. you know, T Pain, um, Future, Travis Scott. These are all artists that heavily use auto tune. But each, even though they're heavily used, they all sound completely different. Okay, and but is that the same as singing? What do you mean? Being an artist, is it the same as you sing but it, your concerts or you produce your concerts? Do you give cred and the weight to the same? Is, it, is the artistry similar with a singer and a band? Is it the same as an artist who's going to auto-tune the shit out of stuff? And that is their expression, even if it's good. Are they weighed the same? Well, I think in um, creativity, yes. Well, the, uh, arguably, there's there's some singers that are just naturally talented. They're just born with good vocals. Right, and in the old days, that those would be the ones that would succeed. Right. If you couldn't sing, mm, but your career wouldn't last very long. Through the use of auto tune and production techniques and the increase in technology advancements, you know, mm -hmm. you're able to do a lot more and push the boundaries of sonics and the way music is produced and the way um, we can actually interpret and listen to music as a whole. So we've crossed over from garage band artistic expression to uh, an electronic auto-tune artistry. I don't even know what you would call it. It's not a band. It's not a singer. Uh, it's just an artistic way of expression, but from point A to point B, at the end of the day, whatever the, uh, is produced and comes out and is the single, it's kind of a wash to your generation because you're hearing the artistic value. You don't really get, care how they got there. What do you mean how they got there? Well, a band gets there by singing and pressing record. Mm -hmm. They get there in a much different way, but the singles released ones really good vocal really well, good performance the other is a produced performance let me let me try to break this down because we can both agree that right now the the music industry is very convoluted <laughs> and very you know because it's all streaming platforms so everyone's oh. making music everyone's dropping stuff so to become a big artist honestly says a lot you know what i mean i get that because it there's a lot of competition lot. you rise above the noise right so if everyone so if everyone has the same tools, so to say, 
and oh. you're still able to differentiate yourself and create a unique sound that and a unique whatever vibe lyricism yeah whatever and you're able to do that with all this noise going on uh, to me that's impressive and that sticks with the people that you makes, know what I mean that makes sense that makes sense so even though you can look at it as cheating and in some instances sure it, <laughs> but to say I mean but that's what I'm trying to say if it's not cheating then it really is just about the end product right and, and I mean, I know artistry does exist within lyrics and exists within production ideas. Mm-hmm. Okay. And older artists I follow are, are on the catch up artists. You are that you follow are dug in and at the forefront. You know what I mean? And if you're at the forefront of something, then the artistic part of it can yeah. rise above the cream of the crop will rise above. But, but even I'm sure like the best artists, the best singers, mm-hmm. they all use auto tune. It's just, it's part of, it's like not using a compressor or not putting reverb on a, on a track. It's just something that. It was different elements in the old days. Even if it's just a little bit. It wasn't the driving force in the old days. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like it is all encompassing. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just an effect that can be used in a variety of ways. How does auto tune and the vocal part relate to the actual production? Oh, everything. Well, the lead singer in the mojo like a Michael Hutchins from NXS, we've seen live performances. Mm-hmm. That vocal performance was not being enhanced. Okay. It was about the mojo. It was about the delivery. It was about the look. Maybe that's why the 80s were so fun. You're wearing your swatch watch and you're wearing your look and your vans and your stuff. That was part of it. And the singing mattered. Okay. The breathing and everything in order to be able to do, a, you know, in the the steroids and stuff that Dave Gunn would take before concerts. It was about the voice, all about the voice. And they were out there on an island by themselves. And uh, it just seemed that was more important. And I don't know if that gets enough cred with your generation. It the talent definitely it does get cred. I mean, there's still crazy good singers today, you know. But let me give you an example on how the, the auto-tune enhances whole as a whole you know because think of da- uh, Daft Punk you know Daft Punk yes I do Com- completely electronic mm-hmm. uh, soundscapes production wise yeah and although I'm sure they use autotune in some part and some parts but they mainly use a vocoder and but it's the same concept you know what I mean how they're manipulating the voice and the sound to match the production and the the vibe that they want to convey you know what I mean in my mind, that's just kind of a whole different art form then. Mm-hmm. It's a, but if you lump them all in the top 40 and put all these songs and artists in one pile, which I think still happens, mm-hmm. you know, maybe we're learning to differentiate. I think that's okay if, if we consider them as separate entities. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they're all in the same pile. What do you mean? That, you know, Duran Duran, Simple Minds, 80s yeah. bands, 90s bands, Pearl Jam, they still exist and are relevant. Um, their type of music seems like it shouldn't be lumped in with produced music where the vocal part and the production are mixed together as one. It seems like it's such a different entity and they're so separate that maybe we should, or if I split them, then maybe I say this is an art form onto its own and this is an old art form onto its own, old rock and roll. Kind of like an art where... Uh, painting, you know, the evolution evolved through abstract expressionism and Cezanne and Matisse and, you know, Picasso's different periods. Right. Up into Andy Warhol, who is with uh, pop art and more commercial art that, you know, like a Dada-esque thing. Which I'm he, sure he got a lot of slack, probably. Lots of slack. Yeah. And so that was pop art up into the 60s where you took commercialized elements and turned that into art, right? Pop culture into art. Well, the next medium was video, okay? I think now, you know, there's a digital art form, right. okay? But we went through video. So I I put painting and fine art in a different category uh, when I started getting into modern art as video. To me, but it's still all within art history, okay? But I can't look at a Cezanne, you know, or a Modigliani the same as, you know, 
uh, a video production through art, you know, or a live display kind of thing, mm-hmm. different elements of that. And I think music should be the same way. Does that sound weird? No, I mean, it's at the end of the day, everything is art. It's all some form of expression and boom, yes. you know, no matter what it is, no matter if it's garbage or you right the most right. beautiful thing, most angelic thing you've ever heard in your life. Right. You know, it's all art. So, And we're saying music can get to the same point uh, just through different avenues, mm-hmm. but it's about the art of but it. But if you're going to ask an artist from a way different era and, and ask him what he thinks of Andy Warhol, you know, he's going to say something different. I, I think that's a good analogy that, that you're making there. Good point. In closing... We have two different perspectives on it. Music was always similar and developed similarly because there was no streaming, there was no TikTok, there was no social media to advance the art form. Right. So for someone like me, since it was that way for 50 years, Mm -hmm. suddenly accepting this really new different element, it's just just hard. I do get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I I love art. But it's hard to bring it into the music realm. I think like it's a repercussion of technology because for so long, the music evolved with the technology, right? And it's going linearly. Yeah, know? great point. And then there's a, a great sudden point. spike in technology and advancements <laughs> and stuff. And so when that <laughs> happened, yeah. the avenues of music, uncharted. You can make whatever you want, anything you want, however you want. But the cool thing is too, though, is because the previous decades were so influential to music right there's still artists making it's not like the the decade is defining the genre like right now hip-hop is probably the biggest genre right now but there's still so many artists making rock music making indie music making hip-hop r&b soul and and things that are like an amalgam of everything yeah so Literally, you can listen to whatever you want. Whatever whatever niche you're in, there's music for it. You and it I mean? also seems like you can create whatever you want. Yeah. And that's what is blowing my mind and hard to get past, is that anyone can create anything. But Simplistic, but true. Well, it's like, it's like you always say, or what people say, um, when the white painting with a black dot in the middle is, um, they're right. like, why is that, you know, thousands of dollars? Yeah, we always hate the saying... It's art history major. Like, why is that art? You know what I mean? Art in our family. Yeah, I always hate it. Oh, I could do that. Yeah, well, As I if that has anything to do with the discussion of art. Like the point abstract. is about the idea, and the point is about the concept. It's not whether you can do it or not, like a Mondrian, and, drive, and draw right. those lines. Big deal. Right. It's about the art of it. And that's where some artists that you follow, I can see, are, on the, are at the forefront of that. So exactly. me asking that question, or someone else asking that question of why is that art, Probably I'm discovering maybe that's the same as me asking the question, why is that art? Exactly. Boom, breakthrough. Boom. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got it. We're busting down that wall <laughs> of the generational music gap, guys. I got it. Um, today was a great episode, great talk. And obviously, uh, our in closing, it's auto-tune is a valuable asset to have. Yeah. For the evolution of music, it's needed, like it or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, um, looks like we're finding some turf that we both (laughs) land on so um thanks for watching this episode of reaction extraction that was our discussion on odd tune let us know what you think in the comments because it is a very controversial topic so um, let us know how is it affecting the music industry um what's it doing for you do you like music with auto tune or not um let us know man so yeah we're gonna keep uh, having little discussions from time to time and uh, we'll put in our playlist which is called let's talk music baby this so the that's first one that's what we'll do you know i mean music's so vast you know there's no shortage of topics but we'll get into it yeah all right well uh thanks for checking us out guys um like and subscribe um because we drop every single day so you don't want to miss any content um so other than that we'll get to the next episode and take care thank you so much bye